this is Kenya Podcast Preacher. Welcome back to my podcast, Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministries, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in and through our lives. The title of this message is, What If They Were Right? <laughs> 1 Corinthians 15, 12, 19. Now if Christ has preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty, and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up. If in fact the dead do not rise, for if the dead do not rise, then Christ has not risen. And if Christ has not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. So, if it isn't already apparent, this message is going to be totally awesome. <laughs> I believe this so much so that I interrupted my 10 message series to drop this one in right after the third one published. Now I'll be coming from the position of undoing history today, and the future is written in the Bible. Will it answer the question, is there a God? Yes, but not by the traditionally supporting the Bible, but by undoing its spoken events. Now I believe in God beyond explanation, and so this approach, I feel, is heaven sent as I was working on my third of 10 messages when the idea popped into my head. And but it is also not because I was losing my faith or because things are tough out there. None of that. I think it was because I knew God was going to take me backwards. And that will make some sense, hopefully, before we find ourselves at the end of this message. So the first thing I want to do is decom the word day. Because isn't the day that we pull out of our hat when we want to support a position we are about to take? <laughs> this is already exciting. Pronoun. Possessive. Their or theirs. Objective, them. Nominated plural of he, she, and it. He needed a ride and she had her car. So they left together. People in general. They say he's rich. Nominative singular pronoun. Used to refer a generic or unspecified person previously mentioned, about to be mentioned, or present in the immediate context. A person may enlist only if they are over 18. Whoever is of voting age, whether they are interested in politics or not, should vote. A person may enlist only if they are over 18. Used to refer to a specific or known person previously mentioned, or about to be mentioned, or present in the immediate context. My best friend from high school is famous now. Too bad we didn't stay in touch after they moved to California. The victim refused to testify at the trial because they feared for their life. Okay, so that definition run may or may not be helpful for this illustration, but we can't take it back now. So who is they? I ask because I feel that they are responsible for a lot of believed mis- or dis-information. One of the most quandarious statements we humans use to support whatever we are about to say is, you know what they say. (laughs) No, none of us ever do know because we don't know who they are when it, whatever it or was, was stated. I know you are right now probably thinking that I may have lost a portion of my mind, given that I'm spending so much time on the they word. But no, really, the they can get people hanged from the gallows if indeed we still did that. And equally important is that the they is and or was all of everyone in humanity at one point or the other. So but I say this because when they gets authentically born again, they no longer behave like the old they which they used to do. For example, The they's like to name drop, so that the they's that have stated whatever they have stated can be in support of what was stated, in order to appear as one of the they's that were referenced, but not by name or any other classification other than they. I know there's a revelation in this. Hang with me. Well, I can go on and on, but you know what they say about those who feel the need to over-support a point. (laughs) So this message is about wrestling with the idea that all of us believed in God at one point in time. And but also ask the question at some point in time of our lives, does God really exist? And it is in this point that I made the reference that we were all a they at one point in our lives. Now stick around because I'm absolutely sure you will, for the first time ever, hear a take on this statement so different than you had ever heard. 
that even the theys might change their story. Now, because we will have to use our imaginations to undo history, I will ask that you indeed do just that. And in thinking about proceeding to the message, I will stay high level so as not to turn out a 75-hour message. <laughs> I know it would take much longer than that to reverse the history that's contained in God's handiwork, but you get my point nonetheless. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So using history and the evidence that we are here and that we can look up to see the heavens and can kick the soil, no doubt believing that it is earth, it's kind of strange to think it just happened or to say that the Bible got it wrong. It takes no faith to believe that the heavens and earth exist. So to go ridiculous and to say that, no, the Bible has it wrong, hmm, but not in that heaven and earth exist, but how it came about being. Yes, that's it, right? So if we remove God from the scenery of our minds, then my story is over. Our story never would have started because it states in the beginning that this is how things got kicked off. But without God, we have no beginnings. And therefore, beginnings do not exist. And if that sounds ridiculous, you can not only laugh at those who now believe this, although they can see the heavens and know without a doubt that they are standing on earth, and but you can also laugh at you because you were a they at some point in your life and no doubt also believe that we came from nothing. Decom time, nothing, noun, no thing, not anything, not to say nothing, no part, share, or trace, usually followed by of. The house showed nothing of its former magnificence, something that is non-existent, non-existence, nothingness. The sound faded to nothing, something of no importance or significance. Wealth is nothing if you are not healthy enough to enjoy it. A trivial action, matter, circumstance, thing, or remark. To exchange a few nothings when being introduced. Now you see, that's interesting right there, because if nothing is nothing, how are you exchanging nothing? It's not anything to exchange nothing, because it doesn't exist. That's all right. It's decom, right? A person of little or no importance. A nobody. Something that is without quantity or magnitude, a cipher or not, nothing from nine leaves nine, used in conventional responses to expressions of thanks. Think nothing of it. It's nothing. Nothing to do. And so let's deal with the elephant on the page. Zero plus zero equals zero or nothing. Zero times zero equals zero. Also nothing. Hmm. Well, maybe there's a different math that results in all things coming from nothing. Nope. Boom. Yes, when we were stupid, Proverbs 12.1, even in the face of the evidence that the heavens and the earth existed, and that the Bible attributed their existence to God, we have somehow changed the logic of math and came up with something that is impossible. Zero plus zero equals something? Who needs a diploma or a degree to know that that is impossible? I guess in order to see that as probable, you had to become smart. <laughs> I have been doing some research on the age of the earth because I'm rather fatigued at listening to the many smart people who have no supporting evidence that they are correct, stating that the earth, including humanity, is billions of years old. It's funny how a lie can get perpetuated throughout history and that the person currently stating that this is a fact believes it with everything in him. And yet the only evidence that they need to know it's true and believe in it is to know that someone else also said the same thing, someone they didn't know. Somebody they read about in college. It is an interesting concept, and it happens every day on this planet. Now, I'm not out to prove them wrong. Remember Proverbs 12.1. But just wanted to know for myself, as I believe in the 7,000-year-old biblically supported age, which helps in understanding our now very limited time remaining on this mess of an earth. Luke 12.49. And even if we had someone who came up with a different model, such as the earth was void, for billions of years before mankind was created, well, I'm not interested in this either, as the support for it might be filled with a lot of what-ifs, and this for me is wasting my time. And so would I support my position, given what we have done to this planet in such a short amount of time, which includes, in part, the number of wars and the atrocities that mankind has invented and committed. Romans 1.30 I am compelled to ask, does anybody actually believe that we could have existed for even 10,000 years and not have completely destroyed this planet? How long did it take us to invent computers? This happened in my lifetime. And now 
We have computers trying to tell us how to think and what to do and the reasons for it. Now they have all the secrets. In another 10 years, we won't recognize this planet. Quantum computers will be the name of the game. Anyways, that's probably for another message. And yes, in 10,000 years, we would have completely destroyed this planet. Look at what America's done in just 200. So yeah, it's just you and me having a time for a minute. I mean, really, speaking of the hundreds of nuclear bombs we have, how long did it take us to come up with an Earth-ending scenario? The U.S. alone can destroy the globe 10 times, according to Google. Back at the height of the Cold War, the global number was over 50 times. This in less than 150 years, assuming it took that long to invent the mess. Billions of years of Earth humanity, and we would still be around? I don't think so. It's not even close to logical. It got so bad in the beginning that God himself had to destroy all of humanity, but eight people. So as a start over. This was a supposed population of upwards of 9 billion people. This thought process is not even based on IQ or even intelligence. Look as I refer to the Bible, which also doesn't exist if the beginning with God never kicked off. But I have no other intelligent source from which to quote. Or should I say that I have no other source that describes humanity more accurately than the Bible? Yes, there is nothing more accurate than the Bible in describing everything. But we will just use it to see how inventive we were before the option of getting born again came around. And yes, even this option would never have happened without God, which means we still would have never existed. Zero times zero equals nothing, not even outer space. So bear with me as I just want you to understand ridiculousness for a minute. By the way, before we get to that minute thing, darkness would not even have existed in the absence of light, which is representative of God. Look, 1 John 1, five. This is a message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Okay, so no God, then nothingness. In fact, nothingness wouldn't exist. Those devils you might worship? Nope. No God? No them either. Dark magic? Hmm, let's see. Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. No, it's not saying that God created dark magic but that he created darkness, an element that is not in God whatsoever. Amos 4.13 For behold, he who forms mountains and creates the wind, who declares to man what his thought is, and makes the morning darkness, who treads the high places of the earth, the Lord God of hosts is his name. So light or dark would not have existed. So, but this is an easy question unless you are stupid. Proverbs 12.1 If there is no light or darkness, what remains? And nothing can remain if nothing ever existed. Because as a reminder, we learned in long division that a part of the whole is what we call a remainder. And if nothing first existed, then there is no remainder of anything, (laughs) including long division. You see how tight this gets when we use bad math to excuse a creation master who is known by all children, who, by the way, are usually smarter than adults? Because as we grow up, We believe in whatever we want, whether supportable or not, slowly and purposefully departing from any truth of God. Yes, all kids believed in God, including you. And well, so be it, so also does the devil. James 2.19 You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. I guess if you don't believe in God, you're not doing well. (laughs) You might think you are, but not according to God. So yes, we had to teach ourselves that God doesn't exist. Brilliant. I don't think anything in nature, and I mean all things created other than mankind, believe that there is no God. Perhaps the animals should have named us. (laughs) You know me, and how I just had to go there. I mean, Jesus said the rocks would cry out if we didn't worship him. How do they know that he is God? And how would they have known to do that? And if those guys shut their mouths at that time when they were worshiping God, the rocks would have cried out. The fig tree listened to him, and it died. The winds obeyed. The waves obeyed. The donkey spoke. They're making us look bad, right? Wow, so that's a departure from the human condition that I was going to use to prove that we cannot be very old as creation. Yes, but I'm back. Let's hear the truth, and as you do, listen to yourself if you are one of those who believe that we just appeared 
or evolve from mathematical equation of zero plus zero equals a monkey or biological other evolution. And but maybe there is something in the biological churning up of a human, considering how we behave as humans in the absence of a God that they say doesn't exist. Not sure, but we definitely need to get to the heart of the matter because we are running out of time to make up our stupid excuses. You know, those that even the bugs shake their heads at when they hear them. I haven't actually seen this, but I'm sure that they do. Genesis 6, 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Okay, so how did this happen? This right here is reason enough for those of you to say that there is no God, to actually say that there is no God. That would prove that this is actually true. (laughs) I know you don't get it, nor do you see it. But that's what he's saying. You're a wicked person, and that every intent of the thoughts of your heart is set on evil continually. That's us. And we think, well, you know, hey, God doesn't exist, so that doesn't apply to me. Uh, wrong again. It actually does apply to you because the only way that you could say that there is no God is to actually lie. That's a thought from your heart. If it were not so easily provable that this is a true statement about humanity, we would have to look for another cause. Some say it is a choice in that some of us are good and some of us are bad. And they even go so far as to compare their lives with someone in whom they judge as a bad person. The problem is that the answer to this exists in the creation story. So leaning on the idea that you are just better than someone else is as ignorant as a person as you can be. Why? Because one bad decision does not make a bad human being. You see, in order for the good-bad scenario to work, all of your deeds committed and the reasons why you did them would have to be compared to your bad job. Again, this is impossible because we lie. Yep. We are data skewers from the womb. So now your support for zero times zero equals us is ambiguous and so subjective that it no longer lines up with the realm of math. It is incalculable. Okay, so let's see if there's another reason that explains a good and evil problem. Genesis 2, 16, 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may eat freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil... You shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Okay, so this answer is so complete that it takes us all the way to death. It covers our entire life. And no one can say that they did not come from the line of Adam, who did eat the fruit. You see, knowledge has been our issue from the beginning. And whether we gain it, lose it, or are absent from it, it is a problem in each case leading to our ultimate demise. Genesis eight twenty one. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of a man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. In case you needed to hear it again, there it is. We have a heart issue from birth. Psalms 142, who plan evil things in their hearts. They continually gather together for war. Proverbs 6.14, perversity is in his heart. He devises evil continually. He sows discord. (laughs) How many self-righteous people have sown discord on this planet? They go out there and they protest for their right to be whatever it is that they want to be, and yet they're actually doing the very thing the Bible says that they would do if they were separated from God. They're devising evil continually, and they're sowing discord. It's us or them. And they say we should be united. We should be one. And yet they are the ones creating a division and they can't see it. I guess they don't know math very well. Ecclesiastes 9.3. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun. That one thing happens to all. Truly the hearts of the sons of men are full of evil. Madness is in their hearts while they live. And after that they go to the dead. Those last three are nothing but the truth, the whole truth. So help us God. Jeremiah 4, 22. For my people are foolish. Now God is talking specifically about the Israelites, but he's also talking about his church. They have not known me. They are silly children and they have no understanding. 
they are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. I stated earlier, knowledge was a problem, but this speaks more directly and states that there is a knowledge that we do not have in our pre-born again states. Jeremiah sixteen twelve, And you have done worse than your fathers. For behold, each one follows the dictates of his own evil heart, so that no one listens to me. We also have a listening problem. All you have to do is say something to someone that they do not believe, and you can see all that listening has ended. And but the listening is really talking about spiritual listening. You see, Adam and Eve did not listen to God. Go ahead and compare yourself to either one of them and believe that you are in a better position than they are. So many blame Adam and Eve for this mess of a world, and yet they cannot see that if they were in the garden, they too would have done the same thing. Ah, yes, aren't we silly? Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Imagine this. That applies to everybody on the planet, to everybody who will be born, to everybody who dies on this planet. No matter what you believe, that can be found in your heart. All you got to do is ask somebody that you'll listen to. And I know there are many who won't listen to anybody because they don't want to know the truth. They got a problem. Why do you think we need God? I suspect that some of you would say, I know my heart and it is good. (laughs) How often do we think this? Look at the words, desperately wicked. That's an insane definition. You believe in zero times zero equals something because of the condition of your heart and hearing. Oh, but your spirit is a mess. But more on that later. James 4, 1, 4. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure, that war in your members? What is warring if there is no God? Probably the first question to address the who among you that James is talking about. Is this those who believe in him, but haven't yet fully entered into who and what he is and who and what they are? Or is this a religious crowd that maybe believes in other man-made gods or are just religious in nature? Seems to me it could fit both crowds. But so in either case, war comes from our not yet satisfied members. Verse 2, you lust and do not have, you murder and covet and cannot obtain, you fight and war. Why? What is so much value that we would be willing to die for it? Now, if you don't believe in God, you are willing to die for pride and for your belief. But and yet, when you wake up from death, your whole belief system will change in less than the time it takes you to wake up from death. Imagine falling on the wrong sword. No, really, as so many have already. Luke thirteen twenty three twenty four. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. This is talking about you who say there is a God, but that is not the God of the Bible. Yes, you are the many who are thinking and believing that you can climb up another way. John 10, 1, 2. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter through the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. You can read all of chapter 10 in John to get the full story so that it makes more sense. So we have the ball gall to say, ah, this stuff isn't real. No consideration as to whether we are wrong or right. No evidence to the contrary that would in any way support the idea that God does not exist. I mean, if there were two piles on earth, the pile that proves that God exists would be a thousand times higher than Mount Everest. And the pile that proves that he doesn't would be the size of a marble. And yet the majority of us will be looking at the marble and saying, aha, see, we are right, while all the while ignoring the tallest mountain to have ever existed the evidence that God is real. Here's another crazy for the crazies that think on the other side of the moon. And no worries, as I was one of those, and we may have even had a beer together. Not that beer is a problem. 1 Corinthians 15, 1, 8. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, 
by which also you are saved, if you hold fast to that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. And the mocking crowd says, yes, you guys believe in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, and then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present. But some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James, and then by all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen by me also, as by one born out of due time. Okay, so allow me a minute to math it up. Cephas equals one. Twelve apostles equals twelve plus one equals thirteen. Plus or minus five hundred plus thirteen equals five thirteen. Five thirteen plus James and Paul. That equals 515, plus or minus, right? So how many witnesses does it take to place a man on death row for being guilty? Let's say that there were just two witnesses that observed you doing the no-no. You murdered a man, and there were two witnesses. And ta-da, most of the time, that's all it takes. 515 people saw Jesus after he was verified a dead man hanging on a cross. There were even people that saw the tomb that was empty, and his clothes were folded. And now yet, we have uneducated brainiacs making such claims like the following that I found on none other than Google. Finally, last spring came the coup de grace. The scholars decided that there is no evidence for the physical resurrection, that instead, the body of the crucified Jesus decomposed as any body does. Most likely, they concluded, Jesus' enemies buried him in a shallow, anonymous grave. All of that is made up stuff. All of it. And yet there's people that are going to believe it because somebody said it. That's how the devil works. Remember, he's a father of lies. The whole world is going to be deceived by this guy, with the exception of a few of us that are watching and paying attention. It's an answer that carries a price of hell with it. And yet over 500 witnesses saw him after he was killed. We as humans will go to any ridiculous length to show ourselves brilliant, including spewing such illogical and unsupported ideas such as this one, continuing with James in verse 2, Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures, adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Do you know that a lot of people believe what they believe because they're afraid of what other people will think of them if they found out what they believe? Yep, the fear of man brings a snare. Proverbs twenty nine twenty five. So what a what is all of that? Hey, Ken, how many times do I need to hear what an awful person I am without God in my life? I would say as many times as it takes for you to get God in your life. Trust me, when you get on the other side of hell, you will absolutely thank me and everybody else that ever talked to you about God. Okay, so it's not all bad either, for the non-existent God has made a way out for the stupid at heart. <laughs> Yes, but listen to me. I was by this definition, if not stupider. We were all a part of a group of theys before some of us saw that the theys were wrong when they said that there is no God. Look and try to come up with any argument against the offer our God makes to his humanity. Jeremiah 29, 11, 13. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Go ahead and pray to your rocks, your silver, your stones, whatever it is that you worship other than God, and see if you can get an answer. And oh, by the way, if it sounds like the devil, it is. <laughs> the answer is so easy that no doubt everyone who is lined up to take a lava dip will be embarrassed as to how it could be that they, yes, they ended up in that line. Lamentations. 32526 The Lord is good to those who wait for him to the soul who seeks him it is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord I won't go into this much further as it is enough to know it is more difficult to prove the non-existence of God than to prove he exists so but we have some who will say well then Jesus doesn't exist or that he was you fill in the blanks 
anything but the Son of God who died for my sins. Many of you will either believe the well-supported no-God story or that Jesus is anyone but the Savior of the world. Matthew seven thirteen fourteen and twenty one twenty three. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. I will see the truth again, which is, there is no evidence against such a truth. You are defined as a many or one of the few, and you get to decide. Matthew seven twenty one twenty three. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. We have those who don't believe the whole truth. So they try to come in another way. And of all the times they get caught, it was when they could not repent and turn from their sins. Yes, the Bible captures all groups of those who will say yes and of those who will say no. You are found out before you even know what side you will decide to stand on. How do you or why would you say that there is no God? And yet when you read these things, a micro or whatever organism that you have invented in your heart and head cannot promise these things to any human, considering we are all in the same boat. They were we, and we were they. If we do not believe in God and his son, Jesus, and their plan of redemption and deliverance from our old nature, which was in no way aligned with receiving peace, hope, or love, what is left? We simply have to lie to ourselves and tell us it's not true. And that's exactly what you're doing. The crazy thing is you know in advance that you're off. And yet, your pride will lead you right to the door of hell. You can change this. I did. And I was headed to hell really fast. If you hope in mankind, or what an evil mankind invents, such as technology to do for humanity what only God can do, you will end up in a created hell. Nope. Even hell cannot exist without God. And well, if you are one that hopes that when you die, you will just not exist and will be free of all the evil things you did based on God's definition of what is evil, then oh, if you hope that life was just a 70-year dream and death will end it so that you will be as if you never existed, then why do we try to be nice at all? That logic doesn't even make any sense. Everybody would try to be a gangster. <laughs> There's no reason to be good. There's something inside of us that's telling us we shouldn't do certain things. Who put it there? Hello? If there is any delusion, then why play nice at all? Look, with so many options for religion, you have to know that all will lead you to heaven, but only one will allow you to enter in. All the rest of the paths will lead you to eternity in hell. God is the only one that tells you this. None of the other religions discount God, and many of them take just parts of it, you know, to make it sound good. It's funny that those false religions have to use a part of God so as to be a little bit more deceptive to try to lure you in. But in truth, if you just picked up a Bible, went to Starbucks and read the thing, you would see that the Bible exposes all of that stuff, and the truth will be illuminated. You'll be able to see it. You don't have to believe me. Just pick up the Bible and read it. This message is just a bonus. You have to know that something is restraining this world from ending right now at this very second. You know it, and the Bible which you don't believe in tells you so, although never has it ever been proven wrong. And nothing exists which is so accurate of a description for a godless humanity than the word of God. And yet with all this evidence, which shall stand against a Christless people, you hope and pray, although to what? Only God knows, because there is absolutely no way for you to get an answer but from the thoughts and spirit of God, that upon your death, which is even created and allowed by God, that you simply vaporize. If you believe this, you have the faith to move mountains, but will still, in every way, wake up in hell. Deuteronomy thirty-two thirty-nine. Now see that I, even I, am he, and there is no other God besides me. I kill, and I make alive. I wound, and I heal. Nor is there anyone who can deliver from my hand. Okay, so why don't we just all do whatever we want if there is no God? I know some. No, many do. But what about you or your neighbor? 
Why be nice at all? Why say that there is no God, but then say in the same breath, but whoever wrote the Ten Commandments was on the right track. (laughs) We say this even though no one can keep them, believe it or not. And I will refer to the Bible to support this thought and truth. And that is that, as sideways as the church is today, there are enough authentic Christians on this planet that lawlessness is restrained. Yep, there will be a very near, even right now day, in which some or one, speaking of the Antichrist, will say that it is the Christians that are the plague of the world, and most of the world will believe it. Did they not celebrate Jesus on one day, and then the very next day yell out, crucify him? The same, the very same people? So goes the church, so goes the restraint. Yes, the rapture will remove all authentic Christians. Now think about that for a minute, and see if that doesn't make you shudder. The world is an upside-down mess with Christians. I cannot even imagine what it will fully become with no restraint at all. Okay, so always remember you had a choice before it got to this. And if you think it will be easier to become a Christian tomorrow than it is today, you will have another thing coming. Although you should, in the face of sure death, take the Christian option, even if it costs you your life. And surely it will once the church is removed from the earth scene. And people... This event is at the door. It is not stuck in traffic. It is not 10 years off. Remember, Jesus stated that this generation will by no means pass away. Matthew 24, 34. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2, 6, 8. And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of the lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. It's a bad news, good news scenario, right? You think it's bad today? Wars, natural disasters, riots, injustice, murderers, fornicators, those who have no sexual limits, which is in the millions today, and will extend to the entire planet eventually. Yes, nearly all, if not all already, exist to move us into a one-world government and a one-world religious system. The book of Revelation is happening right now. It's in our very faces. A good read to help you understand these things is written by Thomas Horn, and it is titled Zygus 2025. And well, if you want to know just how far back our own country started getting spiritually sideways, then his book titled Saboteurs will enlighten you to no end. Now, I make these read recommendations not lightly. And if you are like me in that you are in a place where you want to know where we are at on the timeline of the return of Jesus, then you will be out of sorts at what has been going on while we've been watching TV and playing our video games. I see why Jesus was so impassioned to get us getting on with being separated from the things of this world. You see, many of those in whom we have raised outside of the church, the effective church, if you can find one, will be easily convinced that a one-world system is the answer. And who wouldn't want to live a life of sin being told any and all things are permissible by the existing culture? And why? because those who are plugged in will be removed, so that evil has no resistance in the end time spread. And but even now we should know that this unabated evil has been wild and rampant before, right? The days of Noah, Sodom and Gomorrah, the tribe of Benjamin, succumbing to lawlessness eventually, Rome in its heyday, and even now the USA, which has no limits, even when those things that used to be done in the dark will in the very near future be permissible and done in the light for all to see and even to partake. Social media and TV have already put the corruption in your homes and in your kids' very hands. We interrupt this broadcast for a special report. Hey folks, look at this. We have a handful of people that will be billionaires or trillionaires. And when I say billionaires, I mean hundreds of billions of dollars that will control most of the money. We have a handful of social media people that control 90% of all things stated. We have a handful of businesses and business owners who control 99% of the narrative that gets out into your ears. It's already happening right under your nose. When you have a one world government and a one world religion, how much easier is it to control the narrative? It's really easy to control the narrative. This is what happened to the Catholic Church in Rome. And boy, was that a mess. 67 million Christians dead because they didn't agree with the narrative. We now return to the regularly televised program. Thank you.
You want to see a miracle? Toss your phone away. Yep. Take all the phones that you have, all the tablets, all your computers, and shut them off for a month. You'll see the greatest transformation the earth has ever seen. But do you think that we will do it? Nope. We'll just believe that it's not that bad. That's exactly what they were saying when the rain started falling and Noah was sitting in the ark. And Jesus says it's going to happen again. So here we are. We get a second warning and we're going to do the exact same thing. That's okay. It has to be this way. Okay, so we move on from this ultimate future. No, but today's reality. The truth is, and I know that you cannot hear this unless you open your heart, mind, and ears to hear, that God exists, and that the Bible was written to not only prove these things to be true, but also to point out with pinpoint accuracy our behavior when not plugged into God. Oh, we do not like it when someone calls us out on our junk, and so we either create our own version of what a God is, you know, one that won't judge us for our evil sins, or we just make up lies and fantasies, hoping that we are close to being right about it. In both cases, you shall end up in the same place unless you shake yourself out of your stupor and get a spiritual grip. Listen, I speak as I speak because I was in the same day boat. I had all of the same arguments against God for more than 30 years. I only regret of my past that not one Christian seemed to have cared of my plight. What I still wrestle with is why didn't any Christians reach out to me and tell me about Jesus? My concern is for those days who did not so much as reach out or preach to me The saving gospel. Imagine that. Google says there's over 200 million Christians in America, and I didn't hear from one single one when I was going to hell. (laughs) I laugh, but that's really sad. God had to save my sister. Then he sent her to rescue me. And this was important enough to him that he also sent a co-worker to also hit me with the reality of God. It worked, and now I'm doing the same for you and or your family or friends. Or whomever you send the links to these messages to. Can't teach? Use these messages. I read books about certain topics because I do not have the time to do the research to gather the information so that I can gain a good understanding of the material. In other words, I use the gift God gave me so that you don't have to. This is how we work together. I don't want to be like that no voice, all judging Christian because I know the truth, which is in that we are in need of a savior who paid for my Yes, our awful sins, and erase my and your past of them from his memory. Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. We don't destroy the world in a moment because God is looking to forgive your sins, that you might live with him for all of eternity through the acceptance of his son, who became your sins, and for dying your death penalty so that you don't have to. 2 Timothy 2, 1, 4. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. The Bible states to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, 2 Corinthians 5, 8. You will not disappear, but appear before the throne of the Son of God. And in so doing, you will get your day in heavenly courts, 2 Timothy 4, 1. Let's see if these following scriptures ring true to you. Ezekiel 18, 4. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son, is mine. The soul who sins shall die. This means that you shall die eternally, mean being in hell alive in the flesh, but dead in the spirit. There is no other option other than Jesus, John fourteen six, Ezekiel eighteen twenty three. Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and not that he should turn from his way and live? Yes, he is a good God, and the only God who is love. But if you think he will change his mind for you, you again have another thing coming. And oh, but this is to the Christian who represents the five virgins who played Christianity so that they could reap the benefits from the church. This ends when you suddenly find yourself standing in front of Jesus. Ezekiel 18, 31, 32. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord. Therefore, turn and live. 
Who doesn't want a second chance of life on this chaotic rock? We, you, can live like nothing you have ever experienced. If you will deal with your wild pride and humble yourself to tell yourself the truth about who you are without God. It's free. It costs you your destiny in hell. Never heard of it that way, right? It costs you your eternal destiny in hell to be saved, sanctified, justified, and given the privilege to live with God for all of eternity on a new sin-free earth. No more devil, no more evil deeds of any kind, no more wars, famines, shortages of anything, no more debt or money issues, no more rebellious kids, (laughs) no more news as it is reported today. No gangs, threats of violence, homelessness, gender confusion, or deaths. We do not have the full capacity to understand how different the new earth will be. But just knowing that it won't be like this one, that is like the mix of people we have on this one. That is God's kids and Satan's kids. No more raising Cain. Ezekiel 18.9 If he has walked in my statutes and kept my judgments faithfully, he is just. He shall surely live says the Lord God. Again, in this context, it means that we will live forever in Christ with God. Another way of saying this is to say, we are not really living as living is defined by God. Nope, you can have all that your heart desires on this planet, and you will still tire of those things, and eventually they will no longer satisfy you. You will have to start all over with the buying new things that you think will satisfy you. But then because this is an endless circle, whereby we will always tire of the things we have because it is a way of sin to remove contentment and peace from our very lives. Ezekiel 36, 26, 27. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. This is a trade-off. You will keep his judgments and do them willingly. Why? Because you have the heart and spirit to do so. Why do Christians do what they do? Well, that's why. They receive a new heart and spirit. You will never be able to be spiritually productive without the exchange of your old spirit and evil heart. Genesis 6, 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So you see, it's not all bad because we have options. But God has to point out our need for him because until we understand that we have a need, we will, by our human nature, not go after a solution. You have to be honest with your condition if you are not plugged into God. Everyone else can see what a mess you are. It would only be you that pretends all is well in your camp. You can choose to stop being stupid and lock in your eternity with God. And but if you already believe that you have, then you should assess why you think that looking at the fruit you are supposed to be producing as a Christian is a good idea. In other words, you have to have fruit. Have you ever preached the gospel to anyone as a believer? If not, then you have a serious problem and you will need to reconsider your born again experience to see if it actually happened. It's okay not to be sure. And surely testing that while you are still down here is the right thing to do. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you are disqualified? Well, I have touched on the condition of the majority of the people group so that I might not have many friends out there. (laughs) But no, this wasn't a message about those of you who are wrapped up in false gods, cults, false religions, etc. You already know your plight. And but still, God loves you and desires your salvation. But it is up to you to receive it. And if you still think that this is nothing but a fairy tale, you have and are doing so at your own demise. Not the best choice of words, because although you live forever in the worst mix of things that God ever did create, you will be alive in it, but dead to Him. Zero plus zero exists to prove that God exists. It's not the other way around. Well, that's it for today. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together, we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, still, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of life to shine through into people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep waters.